Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite techniques. It's the technique that I've probably won more bass tournaments on and more money on and more everything on than any other thing. And that's pitching and flipping the heavy cover. That's power fishing 101. We're gonna really kind of get into this. I'm gonna explain how I rig the bait up and I'm gonna rig, I'm gonna show you how I, I cho choose the areas to flip and pitch, and then I'm gonna show you just exactly how to do it. I might catch a few fish in the process, but uh, this main thing is I'm gonna show you how to set it up and where to go and just the proper technique of pitching and flipping. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's get rigged up. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a two ounce weight. Now look at this, this is a giant weight. That says two ounces. I don't know if you can read the, the nomenclature on there, but it's actually written on that thing. It says, it says two ounces. It's really big time. Okay, the second thing in part of this whole deal is this a great big, in this case, it's a, about a five aught extra heavy duty uh, flipping hook. It's extra heavy. Now you can get a, you can get a heavy, uh, heavy cover uh, and you can get extra heavy. That is extra heavy. And, he, and now I'm rigging it up on a 65 pound test braid, a 65 pound test. Now I'm gonna try to get a great big bass out of that thick, thick stuff. And I need big, big heavy cover. To do it, I also need a flipping stick. Now this is an extra heavy duty, seven and a half foot favorite flipping stick that I've kind of revamped. I've made the handle a little longer. I've added some Actually, I put a little blank inside to make it even stiffer than normal. It's kind of a prototype deal, but it's heavy duty. And with that, I have a reel. It's a favorite reel that has a real heavy drag. And I have that drag set so I can really crank them out. Okay, first step. First step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a bobber stop. And what the bobber stop does is this bobber stop is little rubber, little, little, uh, little, little deals, and it holds a sinker from sliding up and down the line. I don't want the sinker to slide up and down the line. So, okay, so let's, let's, let's first, the first step is put a bobber stop on. I've got to look at it. Put the line through the little loop of wire. See, it's into the little loop of wire, like that. Now I pull the bobber stop down over the two lines, okay, like this. I'm just pulling it down, I'm pulling it down. And now it's there, loose. Now, what I've done is now I've got the bobber stop on on the line, okay, you see it right there. It's just right, right there between my fingers. Okay, that's the first step. Second step, the second step is to put it through the weight. It's a big old heavy two ounce weight. Now, I might pitch and flip with half an ounce. I might pitch and flip with an ounce. I might pitch and flip with two ounces, but the point is today, we're in some real thick cover. This is really the thickest stuff I, I got in this whole lake and so it's gonna take the heaviest weight I have. I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate that. Now, I'm gonna tie you a snell knot. The snell knot is, is, is what we're all using and it's, it's, it's the most superior knot in the whole world. And I'm gonna just explain, it, it's such a cool knot. This, it's, it requires some time to do and I'm gonna have to, you're gonna have to learn how to do this. If you're gonna pitch and flip, you're gonna learn how to do this snell knot. Let me explain the snell knot. Now, to do a snell knot, <laughs> Watch what I'm doing. Got to got to come close with the camera, and we're gonna gonna demonstrate this. I'm gonna come through the eye of the hook right here. It's a welded eye. Now you notice there's it, there's no little gap in there. That eye is welded, and it's important to have a hook that has a welded eye because then there's no crack for the line to get caught or cut in. So you don't have a crack in that in that welded eye. So it's a welded eye. I pull it through there and I ma now make a loop. Now I'm gonna just explain this real quick. I will now make a loop like this. I make a loop, I come out, I make a loop. Okay, now that I have the line in a loop, I'm holding the line right here by, there's a, right here by, the, the, by the eye of the hook, okay? Now here's the big part. I take two fingers and I go in this loop like this and I go one, two, three, four, five, uh -oh. six, seven. Okay, I've got, 
I got seven loops around that line, and I pull the tag. I pull the main line tight. Okay, pull the main line tight. Take the tag in and pull it tight. Okay. Now I have a I have a a a, a, a braided. This braid has a, has a snell now. That's a snell knot. Now, what does this snell do? Let me just explain it real quick. What the snell does. Let me cut this off. Now, here's the whole key to this heavy cover, heavy cover fishing. That weight is extremely heavy. Okay. Now it has a concave in, inside. That weight has a concave like this. And watch what happens when I pull that thing tight into the into the hook. Watch what happens to the hook. Okay, I'm gonna pull it tight. And I'm gonna pull it tight. Look, it comes up. Okay, now watch it again. It comes up. Every time I pull the hook, it comes up because the, uh, the snell, the design of the snell is it comes up and every single time you pull it, 100% of the time you pull it, the hook point comes up. It never goes down. It's never ever down. It's 100% of the time up. Okay, it's up. It's up, it's up, it's up. And what does that do when it's up like that and you set the hook, you got them in the top of the, uh, the throat. That's so important. This snell knot and the fact that it rotates upward. Now it's not a, it's not a clinch knot. It's not tied. If you notice, it's not, it's not tied. It, 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 the whole thing is the concave surface of the inside of that weight and the way it's a snell, it goes 100% of the time the hook goes up. That is so, so important. Okay, the next step is is to find a lure that's suitable for that for the flip pitching and flipping. Well, you know, there's a lot of different craw craw worms, and then there's there's beavers, and this happens to be a, a sweet beaver, which uh, is kind of a good thing because you don't want too soft a bait. And this one is a four inch uh, black and blue uh, sweet beaver kind of a thing. And you notice the tail is a. Uh, it's kind of cut together, so I'm going to pull it apart. And this one happens to have a blue, a blue tail, and it's uh, just I like it really well. So, but there's different colors and different sizes to try. Okay, now let's put it on the hook. Here's the important thing: there's a little barb on that hook. If you notice, there's a little barb on there, and it kind of helps hold this, this, uh, this beaver on in place. So I come to the head of it. Now remember, I have a real heavy rod, so I don't need to penetrates all the way through like you would say a Cinco or a small worm. I'm just going to go just a little ways in because I'm going to I'm going to set the hook so hard it's going to penetrate that really well. Now I'm going to take the, the weight, slide it down, take the bobber stop, wet the line, wet the line and slide the bobber stop down. Okay, now we have a properly rigged, heavy duty, heavy cover, pitching and flipping deal. Okay, now let's, let's, let's go to the next step. Next step is where do you find the heavy cover? Well, you know, hey, if you're in California, you, know, you might have an old wind blown shoreline with a bunch of logs and, li and old lily pad stems and, and, and little sticks and stuff all piled up. That could be a place to flip. If you're uh, say in Minnesota, you might find a beaver where a beaver has cut down a tree and there's all kind of junk all around that tree. That might be a place to flip. If, uh, if you're uh, in, uh, in just lily pads in general, you might find a, just a section of big heavy lily pads where all sorts of junk is blown up. Here in Florida, we have really the perfect scenario. We have hyacinths. Some of those big tall things are hyacinths. And then there's hydrilla. There's mats of hydrilla that are all over the place. This is a mat of hydrilla right here. And okay. So there's kind of two places to flip. Sort of the lighter stuff, I can stand up and I can actually, this little patch of hydrilla right here, it's thick, thick, thick. But there might be an open place for underneath it. Now this is a two ounce weight, you kind of jiggle it, and look, it goes right on down to the bottom. It goes right to the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna lift it up two or three times. Now, usually, okay, the, this is how deep it is. I want to just show you. It's that deep. It's, it's over your head right here. Look at that. That's six feet deep right here. That's six feet of water. Okay, so now I'm gonna drop it here. Oh, watch this, I'm gonna let it down. I'm gonna shake it through the hydrilla. Shake it right down through there. Okay, lift it, okay, lift it up. One, lift. Sometimes you'll lift it up a little. See, it's all open underneath there. That's an open area. 
you can jig it like that, nothing hit it, okay. If, if, if they don't hit it right away, I'm gonna drop it right in here. Okay, drop it down. If, I've got it, okay, I'm, I'm jigging up, nothing happened. Now, look at look at the rod, I wanna just show, show you something. This is the big, what we call a, uh, uh, this is a uh, cushion. This is a cushion deal and the cushion is just a is just a big ug button kind of thing it just fits on the end of any rod they're different sizes and now i can anchor that really solid say into my waist so now i got the thing anchored in my waist and i got the rod, rod out here and I'm, i got this big long handle now i can get a lot of leverage at this point if you see i can just jack them out of there okay now i'm just kind of just pitching it in a little bit just kind of just dropping it down into the hydrilla Change it up Sometimes you can stop it for a second. You can stop it, just kind of stop it. Okay, now what you want to find is like this patch of hydrilla. Here's a case in point. There's open water right there. And looking at my depth finder, there's open water right here. There's open water on the back side of it. There was open water here. So there's no hydrilla there, no hydrilla there, no hydrilla here. It's like a little isolated patch of hydrilla. Okay, now I've gone through about five or six little places right here. There hasn't been a, a fish here, okay? There wasn't a fish in this clump. Maybe there's one in that clump. Try a little, little farther up. Shake it down through there. Now be a line watcher, be a line watcher. Because when he hits that thing, you gotta get on him. You gotta bust him out of there. Be a line watcher, be a line watcher. That is a mat. That is a tied together mat and it's blown in, it's drifted in. And if you notice underneath that mat, there is no hydrilla underneath there. So not what the advantage of that mat over that mat is that that mat has an open, really open area underneath it. So what I want to do is I want to pitch and flip that mat. I want to get it through there, see if I can't shake it through. Hard to get through. Even a two ounce weight, I didn't get through. I didn't get through. Let me try it again. I'll try it right there. Let me see if I can't get through. I kind of wiggle it. Didn't get through. There, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. I'm through. There, there, you got it down. Okay? Okay, now the thing about the mat is you never know with the mat like that how deep he is. A lot of times on a bright sunny day, particularly if the water's cool, they'll be not too deep underneath the mat. They're trying to get warm. Now on a hot day, they might be on the bottom because maybe they weren't trying to get cool because maybe the water's too hot on the top. But on, on a cold winter day, on a cold winter day, a lot of times the fish will be just under the mat, just under the mat. And so you have to be ready for a hook set, okay? Nothing hit that time. There's a shrek. I got one, I got one. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, God, I got, oh. I broke my rod. Broke my rod. Oh, my heavens. That big old bass broke my rod. Oh, heavens, I broke a rod on a five-pound bass. Holy moly. Well, that's the kind of pressure you put on them. Good heavens, the hook just fell out. Big old bass. I'm telling you what, folks. I got another flipping stick. That was a good one. He hit right there in that hole. Son, big old bass. Broke my daggone rod. Daggone it, I got another rod. We'll rig it up. Ah, son of a gun. Man, I can't believe it. This rod was so good, I set the hook so hard, the rod broke. My heavens, he was down in there though. I got him out. Hey, I got him out no matter what. I'm gonna rig up another rod. Yeah, these canopies, you know, th this is all just a floating deal here. So the fish can be anywhere back there. Now, you spend a lot of time throwing back in there. So what I like to do is I like to fish the edges. I. I mean, some good people will go back and flip the, the way back in there, but that's not my, that's not my deal. There's one, there's one. Oh. I got him, son. I got him. Here. Now we're talking. That's the kind of fish we're talking about. That's the kind of fish we're talking about. Big old, nice, big old four or five pound bass. And that's the average fish. You catch a lot of really good fish like that. That's a real nice quality tournament fish that, that just a perfectly good flipping fish. That's what you want to catch. 
And that's the deal. Catching these fish like this, particularly in a little pocket like that, hey, you can't beat it, son. That's what flipping's all about. Woo! Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm showing you some really good stuff, folks. There's not, but it just, it's just a fantastic deal here. Oh, man, it might be another one here for that matter. Woo! I flipped right back in the set. I got another one, I got another one, son. Another fish, another fish. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, where is he? Where is he? I can't get him out. I can't get him out. Oh, heavens. What is it going on here? I got another one on. I got another one on. Huh. I got the fish. I got the fish. <laughs> I got the fish, son. A great big six or seven pound bass. He was on the whole time. Oh. I'm gonna have to cut my line. Save my weight. I got a weight down here. Oh, heaven, I just lost everything. I got a $12 weight. That's a big fish, son. Probably in the seven pound, eight pound class. That's what we're talking about. So you can see that was a struggle and a half. He was wrapped up in that tree and I probably lost a $12 weight in the process and got all wet and almost lost my watch and everything else, but got a big, huge trophy in the process. And that's what you can do when you're pitching and flipping. You can catch monster bass like this. I mean, that's two in a spot. It was the nastiest spot I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know if I'll ever get that thing back. But I'm gonna try to get my weight back. I'm gonna release this fish to be caught again another day. So folks, that's pitching and flipping for you. That's big time power fishing style. Hey, thanks for watching. Hey, we'll see you again soon.